small samples. What is a small sample? If size of sample is less than 30, we call that one as small sample. If size of sample is less than 30, we call that one as small sample. That already we discussed what we are going to discuss in small samples. Till now we discussed about large samples only. If you take any problem, you will find size of sample is greater than 30, like 1000, like 70, like 100, like that. But here, we are going to take samples of size less than 30. Whenever size of sample is less than 30, what type of test we are going to apply? What type of distributions we are going to use to test the small samples? That we are going to discuss in small samples. Small samples means here we are going to discuss small sample tests. Small sample tests. So these small sample tests are tested using three types of distributions. They are three types of distributions. They are T distribution, T distribution, F distribution, and chi-square distribution, chi-square distribution. We read this one as chi-square. So testing small samples using T distribution is called T-test. Testing small samples using F distribution is called F test. Testing small samples using chi square distribution is called chi square test. So, these three types of tests we are going to use to test the small samples. Again, in T test, we have three types of tests. single mean test, T test for single mean, T test for difference of means and paired T test. Next coming to F, in this you will have two tests. F has only one test that is variance test variance F test also called as variance test chi square it has uh, two tests one is for testing goodness of fit goodness of fit another one is for testing attributes independence of attributes so like this we are going to discuss six tests here three four five six but whenever if you get a question then you won't mention apply t test for single mean apply chi square test for goodness of it apply f test for variance test we have to identify which test then we have to apply for the given problem. For that briefly I will give you some small techniques to identify the test for the given small samples. The small techniques are coming to t-test. After reading the question, if you find a sample with mean SDs, you should have mean SDs and one sample, then we go for single mean test. Single mean test we apply whenever if you have one sample with means and SDs. Difference of means test also we apply 
whenever we have two samples, not one. It requires two, two different samples with two means and SDs. After reading the question itself, you can find out a sample of 200 people were taken. The average of average mean SD standard deviation. If question goes like this, then single mean. Two different samples of sizes, 1000 and 2000. Starting question starts with two samples. Whenever you have two different samples, we go for difference of means. Coming to this. Here also, you will have two samples, but no mean and no SD. You cannot find any means here and any SDs. Clearly what we can say, pair t-test is applied for dependent data, related data. Two samples of different sizes are taken, X and Y. X is related to Y, then we go for parity test. There are general issues we will discuss in parity test. You can easily understand. There is a problem in parity test for a mechanical students assembling a machine parts is given. They were training is given. Before training, without giving training, they asked to assemble that machine parts. They calculated time. Next, they had given training after training the same mission parts they had given they asked to assemble they calculated time before training after training before training how much time they took to, to assemble that missions after training how much time they took to assemble that missions they calculated now the question is that training is useful or not how you can say that training is useful or not with the two data you can say. For example, before training, without training he is assembling the mission within 5 minutes. After training, if, it, if he takes 10 minutes, the training is useful or not? Not useful. Without training he is assembling very well. That is one type of case. Before, after, very easily what we can say, pain t-test can be identified before after these two words another situation this is also one problem in parity test there are 10 diabetic patients were tested with a drug before taking drug they were tested their diabetic level after taking drug they tested their diabetic level whether that medicine is working on diabetic patient or not, we can test using parity test. So because I am discussing much on parity test, you may confuse between these two. That's why I am giving clarity. These two problems looks like same, but here you will have independent data. Here you will have dependent data. That is the difference. So like this, one can easily identify single mean, difference of mean, parity test. Single mean, one sample mean and SD. Difference of means, two samples mean and SD. Parity test, best keywords, before and after keywords. Best keywords to identify is before and after. Coming to variance test. Here, if you ask variance, Test for variance. Yeah, test. Test whether two samples are came from same normal population. You need to test F test. The question is like this: two samples are taken from different population. They were tested. They have same mean and same SD. Now tell me whether they are from same population or different population. Then you need to check whether they have same means using t-test you need to check whether they have same variances using f-test if they have same means and same variances then we say that they are taken from same normal population if they don't have same means or same variances we cannot say 
they were came from same normal population coming to the loss test chi square test so goodness goodness of it this we discussed in starting of probability introduction binomial and poisson we fitted binomial distribution and poisson distribution now the question is test whether the fitting is good or not test whether the following binomial distribution fitted correctly or not test whether the following poisson distribution is fitted correctly or not then we go for goodness of fit test in chi square next coming to attributes attribute means simply what we can say a character when we are discussing about a character or behavior we go for attribute when we are discussing about uh, hair color hair colors of different uh, two types of pupils were tested attribute eye color attribute so like this they are discussing about uh, some character some color some goodness some badness these are all comes under chi square test basing on these techniques one can easily identify which test we have to apply that is most important in small sample the only simple drawback in small samples is identifying what is the suitable test we have to apply for the given problem because we are having how many tests see here 3 plus 1 plus 2 six tests among these six you have to select suitable one are you clear any doubts you may ask any So T test for single mean. So T distribution we use to test small samples only. So here we are going to test mean for small samples, population mean for small samples. So like large sample here H0 will be same, H1, alpha, everything is same. Test statistic little different. There we take population SD, here we take sample SD, that is only difference. It looks like Z test for single mean, but the size of sample is greater than 30. Here, size of sample is less than 30. For every test, the steps involved in testing is the same. Writing H0, null hypothesis. H1, alternative hypothesis. Level of significance. And writing test statistic fifth one conclusion so these steps involved in every testing procedure so coming to writing h0 for t test for single may first h0 is mu equal to mu0 that mu0 is that may be any value like 30, 40, 50, any value given in the problem. H1 mu not equal to mu not for two time mu greater than mu not or mu less than mu not for one time. Alpha it may be 5% or 1% or 2% or 10% anyone generally 5 or 1% we see 5% 1% like that test statistic here instead of Z here T calculated to find T calculated we are going to use this formula x bar minus mu by s by root n minus 1 whenever sd is given directly x bar is given directly this is when sd is given directly when sd is given directly when sd is not given then we go for the same formula instead of 
root n minus 1, we will take root n when SD is not given. Not only SD, sometimes uh, x bar also not given, we have to calculate here. While calculating SD, we use formula sigma x minus x bar whole square by n minus 1, that we use. So no need to use again. When SD is not given, we use this one. SD is given in the problem itself, then we use this one. Where x bar is sample mean. n is size of sample s is sd of sample mu is mean of population which we written in h naught mean of population Now, for conclusion, we need to calculate t table value. t table value at v equal to n minus 1 degrees of freedom at alpha level. Whatever alpha you are having, that percentage you will take for one tile. For one tile, you will go with alpha level. But for two time, you will make by two. Alpha by two level for two tile test. For two tile, for example, 5%, 0 0.05, 0 0.05. For two tile, you will take 0 0.05 by two value. This is table value. This is a T distribution table. You will get this value from T distribution table. How you know in normal distribution uh, we use jet distribution table? How you see that one like that only? Here the table will be like this T alpha table or T table. The figure will be like this you will have in the table. This is one type of stats table. In exam they will provide you this table. Here you will have B values degrees of freedom. This V may be from 1 to because a small sample up to 29 only. 30, from 30 that is large. 1, 2, 3 like this. Here 0 0.01, 0 0.02 like this. 0 0.05, 0 0.025 like this you will have. Here if size of sample is 10, 10 minus 1, at 9 degrees of freedom, you need to see the value. Under 0 0.05, we have to see here. If it is 1 tile, under 0 0.025, beside that. Half the alpha and see that one. So, like that, you will get T table value. Next, compare T table and T calculated. If modulus t calculated less than or equal to t table except h0 otherwise reject h0 modulus t calculated less than or equal to t table except h0 otherwise reject h0 basing on this condition we are going to decide whether we have to accept the hypothesis or reject the null hypothesis